Welcome to Art Spot Online, the Tampa Museum of Art's art making activity series for children and families. Together we'll learn about a work of art at the Tampa Museum of Art and get inspired to create a new work of art. Today's Art Spot activity is sponsored by Hillsborough County, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, Tico Energy, and Wells Fargo. Hi, I'm Anthony, Studio Programs Coordinator at the Tampa Museum of Art, and we're here in the Skyway 2021 exhibition with Tampa artist Samson Huang. Hello. Hello, Anthony. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So today we're looking at Sam's painting, Tribute to Tampa Bay. So we have this very large, unstretched painting with oil paint of, uh, can you guess where it's from? Tampa Bay, right? Yep. And uh, the first thing I notice are these really detailed local uh, wildlife. This painting is absolutely my experiences here in the Tampa Bay region. For example, you know, one can't uh, escape the experience of seeing all the many different species of the beautiful birds that uh, adorn our land, our sea, and the sky. And uh, also, one can experience uh, seeing all the lush mangroves. And I like the whole sort of finger-like root system that they stretch out and they, they shelter and home the sea life below. You know, this painting sort of unifies um, all the different experiences uh, for the viewer to you know, enjoy or contemplate. There is this kind of great balance of kind of sweet and sour of all these local experiences. We talked about the wildlife and the, the foliage and the, you know, the seascape. There's also traffic. <laughs> right? For and sure. Beach. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's something that's really great about this is it has this really great balance of all these different things that are happening in this, in this one place. Definitely, I wanted to challenge myself with this painting and make a landscape vertically in the style of a Chinese landscape scroll painting, you get to experience different parts of the, of the pictorial dream world. And so it's a way for the individual to sort of go into the painting and feel the magic and the harmony. So um, since we're looking at your art today, I thought we would kind of switch things up a little bit and have you kind of show us how to do something. And I thought you could break down for us how you paint things from life and maybe help get us started on making our own paintings of, of wildlife. I would love to do that. Thank okay, you. great. So I'll meet you guys down in the Golding Shear classroom. Okay, so for today's project, all we'll need is a reference photo of the wildlife that you want to paint or draw. We'll need a pencil, a ruler, and whatever you want to use to add color, paints, paintbrushes, markers. Um, today's really about learning how to take your reference photo and transfer it to your workspace. So however you want to add color works. Step one for making our wildlife painting is to get our reference photo, right? So we have this photo that Samson took. Where did you take this? Uh, right by the causeway. So how do we go from the photo to the canvas? Great, so the first step we have to do is to frame uh, this reference photo. So Anthony has uh, done a great job by sort of printing this reference photo exactly to the same dimension as, uh, as this canvas. And that's an important step because you don't want uh, the proportions to be different, otherwise your final image will come out distorted. Now, you can, you know, you can have a distorted image if that's what you're going for. Yeah, I guess today, we're trying to make it as real as, as we're capable of making. Sure. So I like this a lot. So trying to get these like exact proportions. So the first step, I try to pick out four points that highlights the areas that we're gonna make the framing. If we go to the top, this is the highest point. So let's just put a mark. So we're finding the highest point of our animal. The top, yeah, the highest point of the animals, so that should be that should be right here, and then we try to find the most, um, I guess, right side of the of the bird, and that would be the point of the beak. That one's pretty easy. Right? Yep. And so we look to the left. Looks like he's eating a junior mint. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So point on the right, and then on the left, it, we have sort of the tail feather, and we make a mark there. So pick out the lowest point of the bird, and I, let's say here. Now that we have these four points, um, we want to frame the bird in a perfect rectangle. So if you put your uh. ruler here and you try to see the outer edge of the ruler, 
If you see sort of a similar parallel line, then you can just go ahead and draw that line, right? And then you go to the top. Again, you could use this as a reference line to make sure that your line is parallel to that border line. The next step is to look at the sort of the outer space of the heron. And what I mean by the outer space, usually in art terms, it's uh, the negative space. I don't usually uh, like to use that reference. I call it the outer space. And so you kind of look at the outer space, the, the sort of the, the shape, the form. And then this is a big one. And then you have this. So you're looking at the outer space not the subject. That's how I approach, uh, you know, drawing subject matters such as this bird. It's basically simplifying this very, very complicated shape into a very, very simple shape, exactly. right? That has the same proportions. And yes. it's also letting you see those outer shapes. That's right. right. Yep. You're essentially making the process easier for you uh, to replicate by breaking it down into fundamental shapes. Uh, one additional thing I like to do is find a center. Okay, okay. so if you bisect this rectangle, um, so I have 11 and a half, half of 11 and a half would be five and three five quarters. Point. Exactly. Five and three quarters, right? Five and three quarters on both sides. And this is going to be different for everybody, obviously, if you have a different animal. Even if you print this one out, you might have a different where you pick out where the bottom is might be a little bit different. Right, and then so you can- But you want to just measure half. Yeah. This additional step makes it even easier for you to um, replicate this image on the canvas. Okay. Because essentially you're breaking it down to this and then this. So let's start with our next step, and that is to figure out the dimensions of this rectangle and replicate these two sort of squares onto the canvas. So in this step, we should use a pencil instead of a Sharpie because you don't want to make permanent marks on the canvas. All right, so we'll just try to center the rectangle onto this 11 by 14 canvas because our rectangle is much smaller. And it doesn't have to be precise, you know, just find a, a, a border and you can sort of, you know, estimate the left side and draw a straight edge straight through. And again, what I like to do is I like to use the edge of the canvas, which is, you know, pretty straight and sort of follow that as my guide. So you, the original sort of framing of the bird is seven by 11 and a half. And so roughly we have here 11 and a half and about seven inches. Yep, so proportionally it fits with uh, what we marked out. So we have the overall proportions, right? So how do we go about actually starting to sketch the, the heron part? Yes. This part requires a little bit of sort of study. Um, so we can find sort of the center, right? And then the center of that, but then we said it's sort of slightly to the left, so we can just put a mark. And that is this mark here, so okay. right here, okay? And then again, we go to this point, right? And this point here is really so tippy top, like you can sort of kind of estimate like how low this is. So it could be like right here, remember, actually like right here. So right away, you can sort of connect the dots, you know, but let's, let's put in all four dots. And this part is probably over here. And then this lower point. So we have our four points marked out. The next step is uh, sort of uh, defining the forms. Let's uh, address the head, right? It's really like an egg shape. So from this point, we try to like 
draw an egg shape. Right. So this is the top of the head and uh, you know, it doesn't have to be precise and the line doesn't have to be uh, exactly clear. Let's take a look at the outside space and the outside space look kind of like this. So you want to have, look at the outside space and sort of make that same kind of connection. Yeah, looking at the outside space is useful because when you're trying to paint a thing, like I'm trying to paint a beak, right? Your brain kind of has a memory of what beaks look like and you're always kind of competing with this kind of perfect generic beak shape in this instance, right? But when you focus on those outside shapes, those are crazy shapes that look like nothing. So it's a lot easier to kind of get an accurate yep. outline yep. that way. Because it, when I look at the subject, it uh, distracts me and it, it really, um, it's too much. The information for me is too much. But yeah. when I look at the outside space, then I look, okay, how do I replicate that particular shape, right? So, so it's sort of like this, right? Once the, the top portion is done, we can move to this level and oh, okay. here. It's really like connecting the dots. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be like this and this. Okay. Okay. And then we go to the body. We go kind of like figure out, okay, this is this part. And then so we have something like this. You want to be able to like make that connection. And now that we have the, the major sort of shape, then you can literally connect the dots. So to connect the dots, uh, we go to the head and you figure out, okay, this is sort of like an S, right? You know, so we'll just go right here. Don't shush me. <laughs> not even speaking. I'm trying to pay attention. <laughs> you got to be careful because the, the underside of the head is white. So you want to Make sure you, you start somewhere here. Oh, yeah. And then, again, you're just following, following this as a guide. And then you want to come down. And then here's your reference dot or a point, and then you just want to connect that. The legs are pretty simple. They're almost, like you said, like drumsticks, but big. Yeah, okay. You know? <laughs> and you kind of figure out, again, this shape, right? So where, where is this point? Okay. Right, so I would say it's about here. And so you just connect the dots and to make sure this point is here and then try to make it like a drumstick. So the eyes are really important because it gives life, a character to the actual painting. So I try to, you know, figure out where does the uh, eye uh, belong in that sort of egg-shaped head. Um, it's closer to the beak, so right around here. And there you have it. All right, so what's the next step now with adding some color? In our case, we're gonna be using some acrylic paint, right? So how would you, what would be the next thing that you would do? I like to work from the outside um, rather than approaching the subject first. So I allow the outside space to carve out the, the subject of the bird. All right, so now that our backgrounds are dry, we're gonna to go to the next step, which is basically doing the same thing, but on the bird, right? So kind of mixing a mid-tone color and then just kind of filling in the whole shape, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So you can see from our reference photo, which is very technical with the framing and all that, to this where the framing is gone and the general shape is on the canvas and we're ready to go. All right, now that our paint's dry and we've done our mid-tones in the background and on the bird, uh, we'll just do some lights and darks in the background and then some lights and darks on the bird, right? Yep. Well, thank you so much for showing us, you know, breaking down for us how to kind of start doing our own paintings uh, based on, you know, photos that we've taken of local wildlife. And thanks for talking to me about your, your work upstairs at... Uh, 
Skyway 2021. Yeah, it was my pleasure. I had a really good time. Thank you for making art with the Tampa Museum of Art today. If you enjoyed today's activity, please click the thumbs up button to like our video and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes. Plan your visit to the Tampa Museum of Art for a fun day of art by visiting our website, tampamuseum.org. We'll see you next time.